What is up guys? Welcome back to My World of Model Railroading. I'm Daniel here as always and in this video we're going to be talking about something different yet again. I, I think I say that in every video at this point. Something different, huh? This is a bit different. Um, this is something that we've never covered before on my channel here and it's going to be kit bashing, obviously uh, related to the title here. We are going to be kit bashing a caboose. So what brought this project to mind and the reason I decided to film it was because a couple of people have obviously asked me you know, over time, well, Daniel, how do you do kit bashing? How do you build this? How do you make this? How do you do this? How do you do that? Well, I've never up till this point had really any kind of way of showing what I do because, you know, when I build something, I'm very straightforward to it. I don't usually take a camera and try to film everything I can. Uh, and usually, honestly, I don't think about it. Uh, when I get the project, I just start the project, get going, and get it finished. Uh, I'm just very, you know, cutthroat when it comes to that kind of thing. I don't waste time thinking about it. So honestly, there's been a lot of projects I can think of in the past that I really wanted to show how to do and I never did. Um, and honestly, it's some subjects that I'm probably going to have to go back to and film some stuff for because I feel like it needs to be talked about. Uh, that's kind of for another video though. Right now, the topic right now is going to be covering a caboose kit bash. So this is a really cool, interesting kind of a project. And I again, I don't see too many people do this kind of thing either. Uh, there's plenty of articles of people talking about kit bashing and stuff like that, but never any kind of videos and stuff like that. Um, Daniel Cordopassi of uh, TSG Multimedia, he kit bashed a really, really cool BN Wide Vision caboose a while back, and they did podcasts on it and showed the caboose in various stages, but even that wasn't so much how to step by step kit bashing. It was more over, well, this is where I've gotten with it, this is where I'm at now, and here's the completed model, that kind of a thing. So I actually wanted to make a video that shows my kit bashing and how I do it. How do I make my own parts? How do I uh, make wire form parts? How do I use styrene? How do I cut things? Stuff like that. I feel like I am, you know, a lot of people have obviously asked me that. So I think this would be a good project, I guess, to go ahead and show some of my skills and talk about how I do some of these things. So that being said, the caboose we're going to kit bash is a very interesting, unique prototype. Uh, the particular car I'm building is a caboose that is based in Fostoria, Ohio, which I live right by Fostoria where I'm actually west of it here in Finley, Ohio. Uh, the famous Iron Triangle is the caboose located in the CSX rail yard. Uh, BNO 903985, a C27A class bay window caboose, just like this one right here. This is an Overland Brass model uh, out of my N-Scale collection that I uh, run regularly on uh, CSX coal trains and stuff in N-Scale. I'll have to make a video of my N-Scale stuff, but this is one of the cars I've, I've cherished forever. This is a really old Overland car, but basically I'm building this caboose or this style of caboose rather in HO scale using a Walther's uh, model so there's gonna be a lot of work to get done here um, I don't know where honestly where to start but I'll just have to start from somewhere I guess what we'll go ahead and do first is look at prototype photos I'll go over things with you guys looking at the prototype photos basically show you in comparison the Walther's car with the actual prototype and basically give you guys an idea of what we actually need to do to this so we'll go ahead and look at prototype photos so you guys have a better idea and uh, hopefully you enjoy this video guys so let's get started so this is the car I want to model. Uh, this is basically the car in its current state. Um, as of recently, I think in 2010, they added this black patch because the numbers were pretty much unlegible at this point, and so they had to patch it up. Um, so I will be modeling it basically before this patch was put on. Uh, so I won't have to worry too much about numbers, but I might have to do a neat weathering effect to model the old numbers underneath. We'll see. Anyway, this is the uh, side A of the car, as you can see. Uh, it's basically standard paint scheme. It's rested to hell. You can see it's really interesting. They took some Bondo and patched up all the holes in the pitting from the rust on the sides, which is a neat little weathering effect I can't wait to do. Uh, and it's another one of those things that makes the car look really unique. Obviously, you can see the uh, ref uh, basically freshly restored ends here. Uh, out of basically part of a partial repaint they did at some point in time in 2004. It never got completed, unfortunately, and the car sits like this currently. Uh, so this is the first side of the car. Looking at the second side, which is completely different, uh, you guys can see that we basically have uh, a different window arrangement. We have a single large window here, and a small window for the bathroom here, and then there's no window on the end is here. So, again, you know, just some neat detail variants on both sides of this car. And again, uh, just a lot of neat weathering effects. There you got the freshly repainted ends, all the Bondo spots and primer spots where they took up uh, basically an attempt at fixing some of the rust pits on the sides that these cars are notorious for. So it's a really neat weathering effect. But uh, that's basically the style of car we're going to be building this C27A class cabin. 
uh, BNO903985. And now I will go ahead and bring in to shot the car that we are going to be using for this project. What we are using is a Walther's International Bay Window Caboose. I know what you're thinking. Daniel, what the hell? You used the wrong car. That's a Western Pacific prototype. That's not a Chessie Caboose. Doesn't matter. Uh, regardless of whatever particular paint scheme is worn, basically worn on one of these cars, it's inaccurate anyway. You're not going to be able to find anything that's relatively even close. Uh, this is the closest model you can use to basically create a C27A cabin that I found. Knowing this, because I built one of these cars before, and unfortunately I had a model that I got relatively close and it was lost in a flood that we had last year. And this is another reason why I'm actually building this model. I've come this far, lost the original model I built, so it's time to actually be able to rebuild this car. So as you can see, there's a lot we got to do here. Uh, the Walther's car is relatively accurate in the sense that the height is pretty much correct. Uh, the style, the roof is completely accurate, the underbody is pretty much accurate, the ends are pretty much accurate, uh, however there is room for improvement on certain things and other things do have to be changed as you can tell. Uh, we're going to have to plate up windows, we're going to have to cut new windows in, we're going to have to do modifications to the bay window, we're going to have to do modifications to the ends, the steps are going to have to be completely rebuilt. Uh, the underbody is going to have to be reworked. We're going to have to put underbody detailing, piping, all nine yards, guys. Um, we're also going to have to move the smoke jack, which is a pretty easy modification, but essentially we'll have to, you know, do these parts of the build in various stages. Uh, the majority of the work I want to do right now is the major body surgery, which is like cutting windows, filling windows, stuff like that is what you're going to want to prioritize with this, but this is going to be the starting point is the Walther's car. So briefly, we'll talk about the materials I'm going to use for this project to build all the uh, parts needed for the project. I'm using various gauges and thicknesses of styrene uh, in sheet form and in basically stock parts from Plastruct, uh, Evergreen, all kinds of different sizes and all kinds of different uh, lengths, gauges, everything else uh, that I've picked out just for this particular project. And again, we're resorting to using a lot of my scrap material, like little bits and pieces here that we need for the project, uh, various gauges of 040 inch, 030 inch, 020 inch, all the way down to, I think, 010 inch styrene sheet that we'll be using uh, for this project. So lots of different kinds of styrene here. Uh, and this will be, of course, the cornerstone for the uh, build, taking care of all the little parts putting new sides on, etc. Looking at some parts that we're going to have to make from wire, I'm going to be using some Detail Associates O10 inch wire stock, uh, some phosphor bronze wire from Titchy, I believe. Uh, this is really good. This is a new material, basically the brass substitute since you can't find too much of this brass wire stock anymore these days. Uh, this is a good substitute, really easy for making underbody details and everything like that. So that's what I'll be using for that. And then I also have a good stock of my uh, O10 inch stainless steel wire which is very good for making underbody details, coupler lift bars, stuff like that. So these will be the bits of wire I'll be using for underbody details, coupler lift bars, all kinds of pipes, stuff like that. So with that being said we'll go ahead and move on into the project itself.